Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. So in this video this is just going to be a continuation of my QMK programmable buttons uh, project thingy. So on the last video of this if you haven't checked it out, uh, check it out because uh, I go into kind of more detail on how this thing works and um, like why it's you know needed or whatever or why I wasted many hours writing it or whatever um, so this video is going to be a, a continuation of this project but it's going to feature support for Windows so as you can see here uh, before it only supported uh, Linux because I was using lib input um, but this time I managed to get it running on Windows eventually with the uh, Win API stuff. So the cool thing about Rust is it kind of makes it easy to cross compile stuff. So I'll show you what I mean. Uh, so if I go into the cargo kind of dependencies thingies, so as you can see, uh, if your target OS is Linux, well then you specify your dependencies and if your target OS is Windows, then you specify your dependencies here as well. So I'm just using Win API, and then the shared dependencies are these. So the other ones, and then so to actually kind of switch between Linux and other and Windows inside the code itself, uh, I am actually just going to close all this, and I'm going here. So yeah. You can also use this config target OS Linux. And as you can see, this just like doesn't compile this at all, anything at all. If you're like on Windows, which I am now. And so yeah, here's kind of the same stuff. And here's like, if you're specifically running on Windows, uh, I'll just start the Windows listener. And if you're on Linux, do the other stuff. I'll tidy up all this in a little bit. Um, I'll put all this into its own file, like the Windows listener stuff. So this is all just kind of doing uh, the same stuff as Linux by using the Win API. So as you can see, it's a little bit fucked, but on uh, Linux, it's just basically this. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, it's quite small on Linux, um, as that's always the case. Windows is just too damn complicated. Yeah, so on, Win on Linux, you just basically read a file. On Windows, I have no idea what you actually do. Uh, I just looked up um, like how to read HID data uh, using the Win API and got it working eventually. Um, the hardest part was just like figuring out all this crap. But anyway, I got it eventually. Uh, I need to improve all of this because at the moment it's kind of, you know, not really great. If I go into the programmable keys, um, I didn't map all of them for Windows yet. So as you can see here on Linux, they're all like mapped and they're all kind of like, you know, fairly decent looking numbers, right? <laughs> well, on Windows, <laughs> look at this shit. Well, whatever, it like detects it anyway. So, I mean, I'm not complaining, but Jesus Christ. Um, so I just couldn't be bothered uh, rewriting the QMK firmware for these uh, buttons. So I, I'm just going with the ones that are supported on the actual uh, macro pad that I'm using. Uh, if you want to use more than 12 macro buttons, you can, I suppose, uh, figure out uh, this code here, which I'll show you how to do in a second. Um, so yeah, so if we go into the README, uh, so on Windows, it's kind of a pain to set it up. Um, so if it doesn't work out of the box for you immediately, then it's a pain. But if it does work out of the box immediately, then you're, you should be good to go. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, like I haven't tested this on other computers, so I don't know if this is actually uh, the right way to kind of do it, but it works for now anyway. <laughs> uh, so there is a nice tool here, HIV tester. So that is, uh, so it's using this 
this library here, HID API, and the tester here. So what you want to do is just go down into the releases page. Uh, that'll give you an exe file. And then what you want to do is run the exe file. So HID API tester dot exe uh, tech tech list tech details. And what this will show you is it'll show you like all of your uh, USB devices. So what you want to do is you want to find your macro pad. Uh, so like in my case, it is this kind of custom one for you. It'll, unless you write your own kind of QMK firmware, it'll probably be your uh, keyboard, uh, what you call it, name or whatever. But the main thing here to look out for is this usage page and let me just zoom in here so you boys can see a little bit better. Is this usage page and this usage. Now this kind of tells uh, the operating systems what OS this is. So as you can see here, there is two uh, kind of entries for the same macro pad. This is because the second one it's using um, the programmable button, you know, mode, which is outside of the normal keyboard range. So here, uh, 0, 01 and 0, 06, this kind of determines that this is a keyboard device. So if I just head over to Windows Listener, um, I have like some examples commented out. Yeah, so a mouse will be with US Usage 2 and US Page 1. And the keyboard will be Page 1 and Usage 6. But in this case, uh, the US the usage page was C, which is 13, I believe. So A is 10, B is 11, 12. Oh yeah, so it's 12, all right. And D, or this is just one as well. Uh, so that's not too bad. Uh, so that's what worked for me. Uh, in the QMK documentation, they say to use usage page B and usage seven. Uh, this did not work. Um, it just couldn't detect it, but with this, it could detect it. And that was with the help of uh, this nice program here. Um, so yeah, that's probably the only thing you would need to change is because uh, it might be different on another PC. I haven't tried it yet. I haven't even tried it rebooting if it still works after reboot, but whatever. <laughs> I'll get to that later. Uh, so yeah, everything else is kind of the same. Um, so I suppose I should show you this stuff nicely. So to build it, what you want to do is you want to run uh, cargo build release. Now I'm not going to do it now because it takes too damn long this low SPC. But once that's done, you will you will have a target folder here. So go into the target folder, go into release folder, and then you'll have a nice exe here. So you can make a shortcut. So create shortcut, and then you can uh, copy that shortcut to whoever you want. So I actually copied it into with kind of like my util tools. Uh, so just kind of most of my shortcuts here. And so if I run it like so, you'll see there's some unknown messages popping up. Uh, this is because uh, we're using the Windows API, so it's not just kind of keys. It's also other random shite. Uh, so yeah. So if I bring over the OBS, which is what kind of this project was sort of designed for. Um, so as you see, I'm on scene one currently. If I change to scene two, you should see like a joint ass scene two text on your screen. And then scene tree, giant ass, scene tree text on your screen. And so as you can see, that works accordingly. And also here, you see this message here. Uh, so for example, here, uh, macro tree is pressed and the message is 1029. So this is actually how you get your uh, numbers here. So macro tree 1029, that's how you get your numbers. Uh, so if this doesn't work for you, you might need to change these numbers. But as you can see, they come up like every time it detects that you're pressing uh, 
macro key or whatever, it'll come up nicely. Uh, let me just if I can restart that. <laughs> the window kind of lost itself. All right, there we go. So yeah, every time it detects a macro, it will show you, you know, the message. So you can just take that, copy it into here. Uh, if like your macro keys don't add up or you wanna, you know, swap, swap around the macro keys or whatever. But this is going in order of um, the QMK documentation. So if I go into my keyboard here, my keyboard layout, here's the programmable, bu 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 programmable buttons that I'm using. And as you can see, they're going all the way up to nine, then 10, 11, and then I just skip to 20 because why not? <laughs> and so these like all follow, you know, the same uh, principle here. So like PB1 would be macro one, PB2 would be macro two and so on. So they're all kind of like nicely organized and uh, not really in Windows too much, but in Linux anyway. <laughs> So yeah, that's how you do that. Um, and also if you're wondering how to change some of the stuff. So in the program keys, you just come down here and into the process keys function. And then you can see like what each macro key does. So it's fairly straightforward, OBS change scene and you have the scene name. And then later on you have uh, OBS toggle pause and all that kind of stuff. And also in the last video, I showed you guys uh, this thing here. So this is kind of like my remote that I used to control shite around the house, mostly lights. But anyway, if I enable that, you should see that when I press macro four, the light turned on and I actually can see the light turn on. Um, I don't have my webcam plugged in to show you, but yeah, like that works fine. So you can see it there. There's a bit of a delay because this is running on the Raspberry Pi <laughs> on an old ass Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's like Raspberry Pi 2B or something like that. So there is a bit of a delay, but it's like, you know, not really noticeable. Yeah. It's not too bad, like not too bad. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of it. Um, I suppose if you want to change kind of how this shite looks like, what you can do is you can head over to where you have your shortcut. Uh, so if I just close this real quick, if I go into properties, uh, since this thing opens up in the CMD window by default, uh, I'm not really sure how that works, um, but whatever. <laughs> I guess since it's not a GUI app, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but anyway, if you go into the terminal tab here, you will see that you have some nice colors and stuff that you can choose. So uh, 242 is the maximum. Uh, so if I wanted to change it to green, hit apply, hit OK. Then if I open it again, you'll see the text is, you know, nice and green. And you should see all the nice scenes there popping up on the screen nicely like mad. All right. So anyway, that's how you change it. If you guys want to customize a little bit, I just find this pretty cool that you can do that. Um, kind of, I suppose, one of the good things about Windows that I found. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and then you can hide the cursor by setting the cursor to black. Otherwise, um, well, you'll, you'll see like an annoying box at the bottom, which doesn't really make sense since we're not accepting input. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, you know, you just, launch this straight away, you know. Um, if I go into this process hacker here, you can see it here. If I go into uh, properties, oh crap, the wrong one. Okay, I'm just gonna go Q and K. Yeah, there we go, nice. Uh, properties. So yeah, here's the kind of resources, resource usage. So it's not too bad. Uh, so let's see stati statistics. Uh, so yeah, it's using one, uh, 1.6 megabytes of RAM, which is, you know, not the greatest, but not too bad. 
uh, could be could be less, but <laughs> I guess I'll just have to work on optimization a little bit because that is quite big for what this program is doing. Um, so yeah, I'll have to work on that anyway. But it's not too bad. Um, yeah, so there's no, no like disk activity or anything, so that's that's all good. Uh, all right. So yeah, let's get that out of here. So yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Um, yeah, so I'll tidy up the code for this uh, later on. I'll probably release this video before tidying up the code because <laughs> I don't have, you know, the Git, GitHub keys set up on Windows. So I would need to reboot into Linux and then um, and then uh, whatever, make the git commit and all that kind of shit. And then, and then, yeah, so that'll be all good. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thanks for watching and bye bye.